Hey folks, welcome back to the Jerome Bee Farm and Homestead. It's a beautiful October uh, morning. I think uh, today is October 10th. Uh, tomorrow is my uh, youngest daughter's birthday, so this will probably air on her birthday. So happy birthday to Aubrey. And today's her anniversary, so happy anniversary, Aubrey and Frank. Anyway, we haven't done any uh, videos, uh, any substantial videos in a while. Uh, took a week off, went to uh, Lake Ten Killer and went fishing. So uh, I'll in the search some uh, some cool fishing uh, clips here of uh, myself and my brother-in-law's catching some nice uh, fish up at Lake Ten Killer. Chickens are upset about something. Uh, I'm gonna show you uh, what's been going on since we've been gone. Uh, we've had a lot of rain, uh, unbelievable amounts of rain. We've had uh, one time we got over three, one time we got four, and I think I looked just now and we got almost uh, two inches or over an inch. But uh, that's been really good for uh, things growing, but the bees haven't been able to get out and do their uh, nectar collecting when it's raining all the time. So it's sunshiny today. Hopefully things will dry out and the bees will get out there and get to making some more honey for our fall harvest coming up here at the end of the month. So something else, something weird that's been going on. Yeah. I've got aliens coming and trimming our trees. So I wanted to show you this. I actually saw on Facebook uh, something about what's going on. So last year this started was the first year I ever seen this. In the fall, these little limbs will just start dropping off the trees. And this one just dropped today looks like, still got green leaves. So what it is, there's a little insect that gnaws that off on the end and supposedly lays eggs or there's a larva inside this twig. So to stop this from happening, you have to pick these all up and burn them to kill the larvae so you break their cycle. And looking out across here, I got, these things are everywhere underneath my trees. Looks like they're mainly on the elms. So it's kind of a weird deal. Anyway, I thought I'd show you that. So let's uh, get to walking around here and I'll show you what's going on with the stuff. Oh, I'm also testing out a new mic. Uh, on on camera mic instead of my lapel mic uh that thing is a hassle it has good sound but man, it's a pain putting it on keeping up with the batteries and all of that so i got me a new little uh, mic and we'll see how that's going to work got a little bit of breeze so hopefully it doesn't sound bad so let's get started so here's our volunteer garden i want to show you that real quick so the fall weather is really, the cooler weather is really doing it some good. You can see our tomato there. Uh, not real big tomatoes, but it's put on tomatoes. So all these plants in here are volunteer. They came up from uh, on their own. That little squirt bottle there has got my uh, Dawn dish soap solution in it for the, the squash bugs that were in here earlier. But uh, we've got little watermelons. Oh, my shadow's in the way. Man, that one's buried down in there. I just saw that one. So we got little watermelons everywhere. But the problem is, it's probably going to freeze before they're done. So there's a, a melon, a cantaloupe. There's another little melon right there. Looks like it's got end rot, so take that off and get some chickens. But look at this one here. Pretty good sized. So, I don't know. Might be able to have a frost warning. Put something over these uh, vines to keep them from freezing. But, uh, there's one there. And something's been eaten on that one. And I noticed uh, another one over here with a little cantaloupe. This one here is broken off from the vine. Or is it? No, it's not. But uh, something been chewing on that. So I don't know if that's a 
skunker possum raccoon I don't know what would be doing that it's I don't think that's from a bird you can kind of see teeth marks there shoot it might be our dog you know <laughs> who knows anyway that's the uh, that's the volunteer garden got more melons now than we did in the summer so let's come over to this one here this is the craziest tomato plant came up on its own on top of this old nasty dirt pile of all places so uh, you can see it's got some nice tomatoes on there that uh, we threw a little bit of that good garden soil down there and dug around the bottom so water would stay there on it and I put a little bit of triple 13 down there but uh, there's quite a few tomatoes on there and uh, got some blooms too so, funny where things will grow we couldn't grow tomatoes in the garden but they'll grow in this nasty old red dirt pile <laughs> so here's our compost pile my wife started some sort of a decorative fence project there with uh, cedar wood. I'm not sure where she's at on that thing. Anyway, uh, we uh, put electric fence around it to keep the dog out. And funny thing about this compost pile is it holds water better than my pond. My wife's pointed that out to me. So uh, on the far side, that's... Uh, the leaf litter and what is that looks like we're composting a uh, stainless steel knife there interesting so squirrel ah uh, this side here is all the new stuff we've been putting in there so we got us looks like some cucumbers and squash starting to grow in there so and there's a bunch of cucumbers that got too big while we were on our trip or before then but anyway that's the compost uh, pile got some coffee grounds and stuff I need to put in there, put in there. so we got us uh, some lemon peels orange peels coffee grounds gonna throw in there Oop, here comes Maggie where you been huh what are you doing Okay, let's see what's happening in the garden. So here's our uh, fall crop lettuce and I believe radishes are there. And those spindly little onions from this spring are starting to grow now. I don't think they're even going to make it. Here's a few more over here. But uh, we had carrots in here before we left and it got a little bit dry on them and it looks like most of them died out. But it looks to me like right there along the edge where they may have had some shade they survived and then the rains came so there are a few carrots in there coming up so then over here is another spring crop I mean fall crop not sure what's in here maybe some more radishes but I think most of that uh, died when it while we were going, so we may need to replant that. All the uh, cantaloupes that were here, I think we got about a dozen cantaloupes off of that trellis. Uh, they're done. We cleaned all that out. The uh, whole beans, green beans. There's a few green beans in there. We've gotten a few off of them throughout the year, but not enough to really eat. So we give most of them to the chickens. Speaking of the chickens, there they are. Peppers never really did kick in. I'm not sure what the deal was. I think they got too hot. And uh, looks like uh, got some more growing over there, maybe. Yeah. And here's our tomatoes. <laughs> Funny looking tomatoes, aren't they? 
yeah we pulled all the tomatoes out and uh, all that's left is the marigolds and uh, the marigolds are there to keep the nematodes out and there's the okra we're still getting okra off these plants I don't think we had more than five or six okra plants and uh, it made plenty for us of course we don't eat a lot of okra but uh, my wife fried some up the other night it was actually pretty good and I'm not a I'm not an okra fan for sure but these are getting to be too big they got too big while we were gone so I might save some of those for seed and there's some uh, zinnias and planted some more beans down here for fall it's another okra plant we had to tie them up uh, they were uh, got so wet and soil loose they just actually fell over here from the the night that we got the four inches of rain but the zinnias are all doing good have, we've had lots of butterflies and here's the cucumbers what's left of them there's a few left on there I'm gonna pick a few of them right now That's too big. That's going to go to the chickens. They love these when I split them open. I lay them out in there just like that. And, uh, well, they, they clean them up. They eat everything but the skin. They smell good, too. couple there okay that's enough of that so here's the chickens cucumbers and here's what I got for us that's, uh, that'll make a couple jars of pickles our uh, artichokes have really kicked it in with this uh, cooler weather and the the rain uh oh we got us something uh, on the attack there. I wonder what that is. Come on, focus. Some big brown fuzzy thing. Doesn't look like it's eating the leaf. We'll keep an eye on it. And uh, we've been digging up around the sunflowers, cleaning those up, but they're pretty much done. Uh, out here we've got the comfrey. Comfrey I figured out and uh, Ryan confirmed. If you can't grow comfrey, you're not a very good gardener because that stuff will grow anywhere prolifically. So let's uh, head out and uh, feed the chickens. Okay, so while we're gone on our trip, we had a bunch of food that went bad in the fridge. So I've got some uh, bread in here, some uh, tuna fish salad, some lettuce, and these cucumbers I got just got from the garden. So we'll give these to the chickens. Well, they go to town on it first thing they do is eat out all the seeds and then they work on the rest later there you See if we got some eggs. I think we've been getting three eggs a day. I think we got three chickens a laying. Well, we just have one right now. Yesterday we had three. It's about time to clean out in there and put some fresh straw in. Well, that's it for the chickens. Let's go check on the bees and see how they're doing. see here from a distance because I don't have our bee suit on.
bird activity. Not a whole lot. Yeah, this box here is empty. That's where Tiny Swarm 3 went over to hive number 9. So it looks like the bees aren't totally kicking it in this cool weather right after the rain. Looks like hive number five is doing pretty good there. It's in the sun, so it's probably uh, warmed up faster than these others. It's about, I'd say 60, between 60 and 65 degrees. There's a vacant spot. Yeah. There's number eight. California Queen. I need to get me some more of those. She was, uh, she's done good. If she's still in there. There's infamous hive number nine. Looks like it's doing good. Ten. Yep. Eleven. Mosquitoes are getting me. Not much happening in number 11. 12. Not much going on there either. There's one there on the side. 13. These ones out in the sun are kicking in a little faster. 14. Doing good. 15. much there there you go so yeah you guess it winds out of the north and we got airplanes flying over let's go check these over here real quick Let's get out here with the weed eater on this one there's some wind let's see if we got wind noise on this microphone or not so let's uh Number 20, 21, 22, and 23 is Hayden's hive. Hayden moved, so we had to move his uh, hive back here while uh, they got out to a new place. We need to get that back out to Hayden. And uh, 24. This hive here is very impressive. It's already got almost a full super last I looked in it from just summer. It's already been harvested once. That's pretty unheard of in, in my area here. Well, that's it for the update on the Jerome B Farm and Homestead. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, try and uh, edit it, keep it as short as I can so, so it's not too long because it has a little bit of everything in it. So hope you enjoyed it. Uh, hey, hit the subscribe button if you haven't and uh, check out some of our other videos. And welcome to all the new subscribers. I'm getting uh, around 100 new folks per month subscribing, so appreciate that. We'll catch you all on the next one. Take care.